Sure. Okay, class, good morning. We're going to now look at lab number two, or in your textbook, it may actually say assignment number two, your problem definition paper using secondary data tables. And secondary data tables are data tables of data, essentially, that have already been um, processed, surveyed, and compiled for you. And that's why you're using the census.gov data tables uh, website. You're going to actually, if you look in Blackboard, I've already given you links to a particular, let me see if I can find it here. I've already given you links to specific websites which have data tables. One of the first things you need to do is scroll through them and find a data table, something that interests you. And I prefer to do it this way and allow students the opportunity to choose what they, um, something they're interested in because I think you'll, you'll get a little more involved with it. Now, once you have selected the data table that you plan to use, make sure you go to the discussion board in Blackboard and enter the name and the information regarding the data table that you're using because I don't want two students to use the same data tables. All right? So, once you found a data table, something you're interested in, actually, hopefully, you've read the instructions for this particular assignment in advance. So that way it'll give you a better idea of what you're looking for. Problem identification. If, for example, you selected a data table that talked about, let's see, the one that I selected. I looked at a data table because I was interested in students who reported carrying a weapon 1995 to 2005. These are students in grades 9 to 12 in the United States. And the data table is pretty self-explanatory. So, okay, this gives me an awful lot of information. So, I like that one, so I'm going to keep that data table. Um, and I would actually state the problem that I'm interested in looking at. And I would be looking at students who carry weapons. You know, how many of them are there? Is it, uh, is it disproportionately male or female? Are there any disparities regarding race, ethnicities, or by grade? Then I would need to write a paragraph, or you would need to write a paragraph on or two that describes a problem that you've selected. How does this problem affect the survival and propagation of African Americans? Think about it when you look at your data tables. And please go back to your textbook and read about the quantitative problem solving model. All right, and these rest of the questions for that part are pretty self explanatory. Once you've read and answered those first two questions, then describe the data tables you located with, with reference to the following quantitative aspects. You must locate at least one data table, and you've already done that, and you know how to save it as a PDF. Now, these next questions you need to answer using the data table that you selected. How large or severe is the problem? That's magnitude, mm -hmm. scope, how widespread is it? And univariate, when we talk about univariate, we're talking about looking at only one factor uh, affecting a problem. For example, a univariate analysis might be something like 20, like for in this example, 27% of the respondents had low income. So in this particular table, all we're looking at or just reporting on is one thing, how many respondents had low incomes. Scope. How big is the problem? And you can look, get that information by looking at your data tables. Now, let me go back a step. You may need more than one data table, and you may have to go outside the website that I've given you to find your data tables, which is okay. But check with me if you're not sure if the data table is accurate. So continue reading the questions. They're very self-explanatory, and you're going to put all your information in Blackboard once you've completed it. And if you have any additional questions, you can read the example, you can ask me during class, or you can post your questions to the discussion board in Blackboard. And that ends your basic five-minute lecture on lab number two.